kingdom to, quote, do the right thing by admitting 10,000 more refugees from war-torn regions every single year. UN official Gonzalo Vargas Losa said in a recent piece that the UK's laws are too restrictive and complex because they only let children reunite with their parents if they're actually children aged 18 or younger. In other words, like children, like real children. He also says admitting refugees would help the countries they're leaving. He conveniently leaves out their effect on the countries to which they are coming. Katie Hopkins is a global columnist for DailyMail.com and one of our favorite guests, and she joins us tonight. So the position of the UN, Katie, is that Great Britain doesn't take enough people from other countries. Is that true in your experience? Yes. Well, it's the, certainly the position of the UN that we don't take enough refugees and certainly the position of the UN that we only allow children who are under 18 and we don't allow children over the age of 18, which I think you and I would agree, anyone sane would agree, those are actually called adults. I would also argue we give 3.5 <laughs> yes. billion pounds to Syrian refugee camps. We give a whole bunch of money. And I would also like to point out, I don't think the UN is in a position to lecture anyone. If you Google, you know, UNHCR scandal, the list is endless. People, you know, rape for food, cash for food, uh, kind of blackmail for food. They have so much scandal, so many levels of bureaucracy. They started off with a budget of $300,000 70 years ago. Their annual budget now is $7.5 a year. And that's in 70 years they've managed to get that much money going their way. They've got 10,000 individuals in what is just another agency. My personal opinion is disband the whole thing, disband UNHCR, get rid of the 10,000 bureaucrats, and give that 7.5 billion annually to the refugees. I think, as a British citizen, who doesn't want to see another 10,000 people put ahead of British nationals for health and schools and hospitals, I think that would be a great way to use those resources more effectively. But why, this, I've never understood this, why the UK and the United States and Australia why not, I don't know, Japan or China with the world's fastest growing economy? Why does the United Nations never put pressure on those countries to accept 10,000 or 10 million refugees? Why? Why always the UK? Mm, it's with such an easy target, I think, because they know we have a whole bunch of liberals here that stand around with placards saying, refugees welcome. You know, I think it's one of those things they see us as an easy place to try and put people because we are a welcoming kind of nation. And all people always quote, you know, we have a vast history of helping refugees back in the ages. It's a question I always ask, which is why is it Christian countries are always supposed to host individuals from Muslim countries. If Islam's so fantastic, why not stay right. in an Islamic nation? But certainly we're supposed to open our doors and borders. And already, you know, we recognize we have 200 illegal migrants crossing into the UK each week from camps in Calais, and that number is only increasing. And we also see from the pictures, all of the boys that said they were under 18, many of them were 30 years old, 40 years old, and we have to take sure. them up their word because it would be against their human rights for us to question what they're they older than I am. Were. <laughs> no. Well, indeed, so really no, quickly, our, our president is going to be touching down in Europe. He's going to be over there this week on his foreign trip. What kind of reception can he expect? <laughs> He's going to have a nightmare. He's a man with a huge heart. He's a man with huge emotional engagement with people. He's going to meet with Macron, who's the closest thing to automated intelligence that we have. I've seen people that are more animated with rigor mortis than Macron. He's going to Belgium, which, you know, is the center of bureaucrats. It is the swamp. He's going into the heart of the swamp. And he's going to meet people there to talk about NATO. All of the countries that he's going to don't spend the required 2% that he wants them to spend on NATO. And finally, he's going to end up in Sicily, which, as you will know, is the sort of halfway point for the ferry that now runs for migrants from Libya to Italy. And the other thing I want to say is that whilst he's in Sicily, all of the borders are being shut down. So the borders are being closed. So all of these liberal leaders that preach to us about having open borders, having migrants go wherever they like, having half of Africa come to the UK, whilst the G7 are meeting, all borders are being shut for their safety. Yeah. And it makes you think, I think, about the hypocrisy that we have in Europe. Oh, and of I'm course. really looking forward to Trump coming and blasting a hole 
through all of that. And he'll also meet the Pope who said, any man who thinks about building walls and not bridges is not Christian. And of course, the Pope's the one that sat oh, in the Vatican remember. City, largely surrounded by walls which were built to keep out the marauding Muslims back in 840. <laughs> I'm glad someone remembers that. Kenny, it's great to see you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Tucker.